Here we go. Saturday afternoon, um, episode four of the Mark Zoom Conversations. Today I have a really special guest, um, Katrina, good friend of mine. I consider her family. Uh, we've known each other pff, over a decade. Um, super proud of what she's been able to do in her career. Um, she's been in the music business, the events business, have a cool conversation today. I'm sure everyone's going to learn a lot of things. Um, Kat, just let people know who you are and then we could get into some questions. What's up? You're being so, so um, generous by saying we've only known each other a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it may be two. <laughs> it'd be over a decade, so let's call it 20 years. My, I think it has been close to it, I think. Oh, so yeah. I've been here, I was, like I was just saying, my, I've had my business 10 years. So, right. it's, I mean, and that was when I moved to Toronto. So I think it's been, I think it's been close to two. Yeah, let's call it, call it 20 years. <laughs> it's, it's a short but a long time. Um, um, what was the question? <laughs> before we can get started, you know, yeah. like I think you and I were chatting before and, you know, COVID's happening. I think it's important to let everyone know that like, we're super blessed to be healthy. There's people listening and you're going through things or you lost family members or someone's sick. I send my condolences out to you. Um, and I hope people get some, you know, strength from this conversation and let you know that there's other ways you can attack what's gonna happen out of COVID. Um, I'm gonna big you up again. Katrina's been in a business for a long time. She hates when I say that, but um, she's gonna drop some gems on you guys. and. Uh, Hopefully people take away some, some cool stuff that will help them navigate the music industry. Uh, Katrina, so let's start here. Um, how did your journey start in the music industry? Ooh, it started uh, in Scotia. So I'm originally from Nova Scotia. Got it. Uh, and in Scotia, there wasn't a lot of DJs coming from outside of like plant, like the, it, I would say concerts or parties weren't really happening in Scotia outside of like people in Nova Scotia putting them on. Got um, <clears throat> we, there's a tournament called Black Tournament that would happen every year and we'd sort of get one or two people maybe, but it was really hard to get venues. Right. So we'd be partying in like the back of a furniture store, <laughs> if you may remember, <laughs> um, or <clears throat> some kind of open space like the Y, um, so like the part it was a very like kind of disjointed scene. So around that same time, my cousin was in Baby Blue Sound Crew. Okay, Baby, and, are you taking us back? Okay, uh -huh, I'm taking that down <laughs> now. I'm dating myself, but yeah. And <clears throat> they had just been signed to Universal and put out their album. And that was it a record back then or a CD? I can't remember. But anyways, put out their album, and they were doing release parties, <clears throat> and they didn't have anyone to do it in Scotia. Okay. And so I said, Oh, I can do it. Cause I didn't want to connect them with anyone who was doing parties there. Cause I didn't think they would do it well. Got it. So that was my first party. My first party was the CD release for baby blue sound crew, like their first album. Um, yeah. baby, and it was rammed. I remember being like packed. And, and just so to give context back yeah. then, baby blue sound crew was like a group of people that played music. It wasn't necessarily. They were DJs, yeah. They were DJ sound, uh, they were a sound crew. Uh, basically three main people, like a DJ, an MC, and a third person who kind of played a different style of music. Gotcha. And they were pretty big in Canada at that time. Um, I mean, they were huge in Toronto, and they, I think when they got signed, it, the, the goal was for them to be bigger in, like, across Canada and internationally. Right. Um, because <clears throat> through that we did some gigs in Bermuda as well because as you know in Scotia is a huge yep. Bermudian community so um, yeah that was kind of my first my first uh, foray into music and I and it's funny because I realized just as I was sort of thinking about some of the things we might be talking about today mm -hmm. like why I went into promoting parties or why I wanted to go into artist management right in both cases there were things I were passionate about but mostly it was because I felt that I could do it better than the way I was experiencing like those worlds Interesting. so I felt like oh I, like why are we doing why are these parties here and like this price or with this why are people having this experience like I felt like I could provide a better experience well, and can, like better DJs you can enhance the experience for sure yeah and same thing I think with with artist management like I was doing artist management before I started my own company but felt like 
uh, I learned a lot, but I felt like I could do it with more integrity. And I felt like I could do it with more organization. And I felt like I was coming from it from a, a bit more of an artist centric perspective. And then I was having other people say, Kat, why aren't you, why don't you do this? Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, you, so technically you started in events, events turned into artist management slash working in the music business. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. No, that makes a ton of sense. Um, I think that's an interesting transition because a lot of people don't understand you can start somewhere then transition to something different, but be in the same space. Um, and I don't think I even know this. When, what was your like, aha moment where you're like, you know what? I think I could do this as my career. Cause like, I know there's a lot of people who started off doing things way back in the day that are now working at a bank or. Yeah. You know, Ooh, they're... we're getting to the good stuff now, Dion. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, you know, like what was the aha moment for you? Uh, where you... Gonna, it was my dad. Okay. So I was, it, so again, I was in Scotia. I was actually, I don't know if it's okay. I mean, I guess it's okay for me to say this. You're going to tell me in a moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was part of the BBI. Do you remember the BBI? BBI. Oh, um, Bermuda. Black Business, Black Business Black, Yeah, yeah, in Halifax. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I was in that program. Because <clears throat> um, I had done these parties. I had done a, like a Baby Blue party. I had done a couple with Baby Blue. And then I was like, oh, well, now that I've done this, I'll bring some other DJs in. And I brought in... Um, Scratch, uh, and then I brought in someone from Montreal whose name's escaping me right now. Majess, I think. Majess, I, I could actually vividly remember your parties. Right the parties, now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so I think um, anyway. So I was doing that. So then I was like, well, okay, I need a business plan. Like I'm, I was just kind of doing it. Like, let's do a party. Yeah, let's have fun with it. Yeah. But like, yeah, but then I was like, oh, I should, if, I, if I'm going to do this as a business, I need a business plan. So anyways, I did the BBI program and I had a business plan. I did a ton of research. I like reached, I like did the research where you're like cold calling clubs to like find <laughs> out information and shit, like the stuff they tell you to do, <laughs> to do market research. Right. <clears throat> and um, anyways, during that time, it was in this through the summer and I came up here for Carabana mm -hmm. and they had this conference here called NABFEM. Are you, have you, are you familiar? No, I don't even know what that is. But so then. NABFEM was this big convention. NABFEM stands for the National Association of Black Female Executives in Music and Entertainment. So it was their first time having, it's pretty much a, an American uh, organization, but they want, at that time it was super cheap for them to have their convention in Toronto and for everyone to fly in. And like heavy hitters, like, Sylvia Roan was here, Suzanne DePass, who's the executive producer of the American Music Awards, Gene Riggins, who was the head of Universal at the time, wow. Johnny Walker was like the head of Def Jam at the time, or had, like different departments within those uh, labels, like Violator Rec, like every like black female executive in music right. was there. Like Alicia Keys' mom, Kanye West's mom, because oh, they wow. had a Mother's Day like brunch, not right. Mother's Day, like a brunch for mothers. For mothers, right. Um, <clears throat> Like it was crazy. <laughs> and so I was like, I can't afford to go to this. I'm going to volunteer. So I volunteered and like I met and everyone was so gracious because the whole purpose of it was to like, not mentor in an official capacity, but just to like, you know, lift people up. And like my experience was, oh my gosh, like the I was thinking about throwing parties in Scotia. Like that's still cool. But like right, right, it blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like a whole world of black women who are killing it in the game. Like, and it's not, like I knew that, but it seemed so far away from me. Like I'd never thought I would, could even think of being someone like a Jean Riggins or a Sylvia Rome. Like that just seemed so out, out of the world of where I was. Right, right, right. So I had this experience, I'm meeting people, everyone is like really gracious, they're mentoring me. Like I'm working hard to like learn like production and like real production like stage production and stuff behind the scenes right. and like that was the moment where i was like oh this is something i could do like i should really think about what space i want to take up in this industry Interesting. so um <clears throat> i think it was only like what i was supposed to be back for class for the bbi like on my like it's monday to friday and like this was i can't remember exactly what i think it was like i think i might have asked if i could stay and they were like, no, you have to be back for, back for class. Right. And I'm like, okay, but this is like, the whole purpose of my business is music and entertainment. 
Right. And um, this is like, it doesn't get any more brand specific <laughs> than the National Association of Black Female Executives in Music and Entertainment. Like, I don't think you aren't hearing me of like the people I'm going to meet by staying here this weekend. And they're like, no, you have to be here for the, you can't miss class on Monday. So they're real adamant. They want you to come back to be in the Yeah. Program. And they're like, if you don't come back, you're out of the program. And I'm like, what the, like, I'm like this, I, I'm like, no, like, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> read my program, like, this is my business. Like, there's no, like, this is a perfect opportunity. This is like a win. You guys could even celebrate this as a win. Like, yeah, what this, do you is, mean? this is good for them as well. Yeah. Right. And no, they were like, the rules are you have to be back in class on Monday. And so I was like, well, fuck it. I'm not, I guess I'm out of the program. I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I really felt passionate. I was like, no, I can't give up this opportunity. Like, when will I ever have a chance to connect with women at this level? And I didn't know even at the time the sisterhood that would like come that from that. Come it was out. the best decision I made. I have no regrets. And it really made me realize, like, as important as a lot of like business programs are. I do think sometimes that like, like they were teaching business skills, but mm -hmm. like in that moment, that is not a smart business decision. Like that is not entrepreneurship. Right. And so like, so for me, I was just like, no, this makes no sense. Like, so I'm staying. And I, I mean, I have some of those relationships to this day. Yeah, for sure. Like still, still in the, in, still, yeah. I think that, so that and, I, and a big story I mentioned that it was it came from, from my dad because I came back and my dad was like I thought I was like oh my gosh he's gonna be like you got kicked out of the program <laughs> like all these, and he was like he's like you know every time you go away you have you come back and you're really depressed <laughs> and he's like and I don't know why you don't move and I was like oh I, I never thought he would be supportive of that because it's just right. him and I and I was like uh you know and he said you know you can keep hitting your head against a brick wall I mean, he's Scotian, so he knows exactly how I was feeling. And he's like, you can keep hitting your head against a brick wall, but all you're going to get is a headache. And that's why I don't know why you don't move. I think, you know, I think you actually told me this story before. Yeah, right? yeah. And I did move. I did. I literally, that December, like, got in my car and drove, like, drove to Toronto with, like, 200 bucks. <laughs> and then that was it. Like, never, no turning back. I've been here ever since. I mean, I don't mean that was it, as in there's been no problems. <laughs> no, 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 obviously, but I mean, you, you made your decision and you moved to Toronto yeah. and then you decided this is what you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, what I thought was interesting, I want to highlight two things that you said. A, because people think that, you know, I have an idea, that, but it's not important to build a business plan. So, mm -hmm. like, the fact that you were trying to, well, the, the course you were taking was teaching you how to build a business plan. Yeah. I think that's something that anyone wants to, to do any type of business. Don't overlook that part. Yeah. Uh, and then the second part is that you volunteered. Uh, I feel like a lot of people overlook the free work because I don't want to fucking volunteer. Like, you know what? That's beneath me. I'm good already. It's like, no, yeah. sometimes it's not about the work. It's about the space that you're going to be granted access to. Yeah, exactly. I thought, I thought that, was, that was super clever of you. And, and that's a good part to, to highlight. You know? Yeah. Um, you touched on like the sisterhood part, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that just makes me think like I've I had a lot of friends that worked in the music business, a lot of females that worked in the music business. And everyone that I, every woman that I've ever talked to that worked in the music business always says, Dion, man, this shit is hard. Um, as a woman, never mind men, men have it because it's a male dominated industry. Um, maybe speak to like one or two challenges that you faced being a woman in the, the music industry. Whew. Um, I mean, I think it's evolved. I feel like my experience when I started is okay. different than the experience I've, I have now. Okay. Um, so I think in some ways, like with that story, it kind of started on a high in terms of just being able to see all of these women in one room, like the success and the excellence mm -hmm. was what inspired me to kind of go into this field. Right. Um, and I had great mentors. Uh, but there were way less music female music managers then like there's more now but back then i only knew uh, like one or two got it in canada i mean i'm sure there are and i don't mean that there's none anywhere but yeah. there wasn't a lot of people it wasn't very well uh, not, today there's a quite there's enough there's a ton um <clears throat> so i think early on the the challenges I had were, was just no, no one ever thought I was the manager. Like I was just always assumed as to be the wife or the dancer okay. or the, fa I mean, fans even, like a groupie even. Cause like there have been times where um, we've been on tour 
where like if I leave the backstage area to do something, if I have to like go run to like front of house or something and come back, like if that security wasn't there when we did sound check, they just assume I'm a fan trying to get backstage. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, like I have a backstage pass, first of all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it was like, I mean, and I think probably I'm insulated from the, some of those things, the more successful we become, because then I started having teams that would run interference. So like, for example, Debo, who does our security, okay, he would start just like making sure everybody knew who I was behind, like while I'm doing my, he's like, I, we don't want Katrina to have this experience. Right. So he would like, when he's doing his conversations with security in general, he's like, yo, this is the manager, she runs the show, like, do not, like, it's sad that someone has to even have that conversation, but, like, I have had team members, like I said, as we kind of gained more and more success, who would sort of run interference, but, like, I moved a few, I would say maybe five years into my career, right. we did um, a film with Sean, Sean Desmond, Okay. and RT, and so RT is a music director and also a, a TV director now as well, Okay. So he and I created this film to coincide with Sean's album. And I'm trying to make this short. So anyways, we had to raise a whole heap of money. We didn't know how we were going to do this, but we were like, you know, trying to figure it out, have our little deck and stuff. We're going in to do pitch meetings with brands. Right. So we have, um, go in to do this pitch meeting. And like the deck has who we are in it. Like, Mm -hmm. who I am, my success is who RT is, who's right, right. Just out, like, Sean, out, like all the team members, because they don't know anything, right? Like they might have heard of Sean, but they don't necessarily know like, yeah, but th these are the people you want to like tell this story. So this is Katrina, right. this is RT, this is Sean. Um, like this is the producer, this is like the dancers, this is right. the choreographer, right? We understand that who's on the team and yeah. whose role, right. Like we have, we are in their office, RT and I physically in the pre-Zoom days, <laughs> showing our presentation, every, the brand's on board, every, they're excited. Yeah, they want to give us money. We get on a call. They're like, let's get on a call next week. We get on a call, conference call. I'm on there before RT is. Right. And, you know, just chatting while we're waiting. And the guy is like, oh, yeah, so how long have you been RT's secretary? And I'm like, oh, wow. First of all, who even uses the word secretary anymore? Like, <laughs> that's outdated. But two, like, were you not in the presentation? But, but like, in his mind, mind. In his mind, he put. He, he had, even though he had seen this. Right. I must be the assistant or the secretary of, of the, of the man who was there, right? Right, 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 right. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, what was the question? What are the challenges? <laughs> yeah, what are the challenges? Because, like, that's, so he's been conditioned, basically, to not see you, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, like, let's go go deeper into that like how yeah. do you get over those challenges like because that probably happened multiple times this is one story that you're yeah saying. Like, yeah I mean it happens I think um it's interesting because I was on a zoom a couple days ago with yeah. some with um when we were talking about this and like and the generational differences I think of even what women have experienced right I feel like I have had some of the experience, those experiences. And then today I feel like that's a little bit less, little bit, like, I don't mean less likely to happen, less likely to happen with someone who is younger. Like I, I might still have that same meeting because a lot of brand uh, people who are still running the show are still kind of older white males. Okay. So then that could still happen, right? But like, okay. it's probably less likely to happen if that brand contact is a younger person who is a little, you know, more conscious of what's happening in the world. So um, one of the things that someone brought up in that was like how you dress and how like how you present yourself in, in the business context. And I thought that's interesting. I was like, I mean, I know we've talked about that in general, like, you know, dress for the, what's that saying? Like dress for the it's role you want to play. Some, some right? yeah, yeah, I get it. And I've never done that. Like I've never, I have always, and I think part of it came back to this film, like I was t telling you, because I, when we were creating the deck, at first, the person who was advising us was like, yeah, this is like, he was at a big brand and he was helping us. And he's like, this is like the correct way to make a deck. And then he, at, by the end of it, he was like, forget about all that, because actually the whole purpose, the whole reason they should want to work with you is because you're not corporate, like, because you are 
creative and because you have this access, right? And I think that's kind of how I have presented myself right. individually as a manager too. Like, I mean, I'm obviously I dress appropriately, but like, I have never been like, okay, I'm going to wear a business suit because I'm going into this space. I, right or wrong, I don't know. I'm like, it came up recently and I thought that was interesting. I was like, I never did do that. I, I always have been very like, wear my personality on my outsides. <laughs> but, but I think that's, that's super important. Like one of my mentors always used to say like, dr like dress, dress, go to the meeting, dress like the person they want to do business with. Yeah. Well, if you went with a suit, then you're a corporate citizen. That's yeah. not who they want to do business with. They want to yeah. do business with the creative person. So like you should be dressing yeah. that part. I think, I think so, but I think then that's the question because it's like, but do they or do they then not see me? I, I mean, because, I guess that's a challenge that could potentially yeah. be a challenge for a woman, for sure. Yeah. I can see that. I don't regret that decision. I'm just saying it was, a, it was something that I've been thinking about looking back. So I'm like, oh yeah, I have not ever done any of that. <laughs> right, right, right. right, yeah. right for sure. um, so anyways, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Um, okay, let me jump in. There's a question here that I think you'll be a good person to ask. Yeah. Um, how do you break into the industry as an A&R or a music supervisor for TV shows, movies, et cetera? How to break into the music industry as, well, those would be two separate roles, an A&R and a music supervisor. Um, but I think music supervision, the best way to get into that is to meet music supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them have junior programs. So you can like, I don't know if it's an intern role or paid role, but um, yeah, you can, you can get a junior role and learn the aspect of the business, but like quite a lot of music supervisors do that. So they have junior programs. And what yeah. about, is that the same for an a &R? Um, No, I don't think so. I think with an a and um, that is a good question. I guess, I, I mean, a good starting point with having some, like, cause an a and basically you want to show that you can discover talent and take it and take it like from scratch to kind of like, a fully a produced project right so i think it would be doing that like you should have some kind of if i was looking for someone i'd be like well how do i I'd want to know i'd be looking for oh yeah that person has a really good eye for identifying talent right, right so right. like if that person says go to this show i would go so like define like kind of establishing yourself as someone who's like i, I who, guess even diving a little bit deeper it's like how yeah. would say that's you and say it's me and I want to be an a and like, yeah. what do you look for? Like, how do you see what that taste and tone looks like? If someone wants to present you that, how do you evaluate that? How are you measuring? Okay, you know what, Dion kind of has an eye. Like how, what's up, like what's a measurement tool that you look at to be like, yeah, that person has some talent. As an A&R? Yeah, as an A&R. Cause like people would just, oh, yeah, I know. Curating, that. curating an event. Right. Um, I think if, like if, if they curated an event and all the talent on there was like super dope, um, if they are, maybe they have a podcast, maybe they have a um, playlist. Right. It, like there's not, I don't think one specific way to do it, but there has to be some consistent way that you're telling me that you know how to identify talent, that you can pick out the diamonds in the rough. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Right. So that'd be a cool way to showcase to you that they have that skill. Yeah. Well, not to me. I mean, as a manager, it's not something right. I, but yeah, but like for, as an example, yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, right behind that, like, where do you see some of the opportunities in the music business for people that want to break into it? Well, right now, I think there's a huge opportunity for anyone in like, who can make the live streaming experience more enjoyable and less frustrating live okay yeah because right now since quarantine now that live shows are no longer happening and we don't know when live shows are going to happen again right. um or how long it's going to be or what those will look like i think any kind of innovation around that space like some of the major frustrations with live streaming right now is the audio the um just setting up your like not because because not a lot of artists have really done it that much before this pandemic right uh not a, not everyone knows how to actually do it with really great audio and like how to plug in and that whole like i think like so, if someone really had that down they could sell that and be like 
cheap little amount of money for like, let me show you how to set this up. Like, no, it's like it's 15 minutes, but just to walk, artists would pay for that to like, just show me how to walk through this so that my audio is crisp and I just, just don't have to worry about this again. And yeah. it's always different per platform. What was the, we had a perfect example of that because we had an established artist. What was the one on uh, Instagram, the battle? Oh, uh, Teddy Riley? Yeah, yeah, Teddy Riley needed that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, that's a perfect example. You can make yeah, it. Like, yeah. And but he's, that, like, so that, but then also, like, there isn't, I mean, there may be one that exists, but it is not well known enough, which is why I say this space is still open, okay. of how you can perform lot, a live stream with bandmates or peers, like people in your group in different places. Interesting. There's too much of a delay or a lag. So it's like, well, how do you patch everybody in to one thing, but where everyone can hear what's going on? And what, it's, what, what would you call that? Like what, like, what would you call that? Like the job, like what kind of job, like where does that fall under? It's not a job, it doesn't exist yet. That's so it's <laughs> something you create, you, you, whoever you are out there, you create the title. <laughs> That's a gem right there. You want commission on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so back to, you know, you being a, a woman in the music industry, because it seems like everyone wants to get in the music industry. It's such a sexy space to be in. Obviously it touches so much people across the world. What are three things you would say, woman or man, you need to have to work inside of the music industry? Frozen tooth. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, did you hear what I said? <laughs> we just jinxed ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the question. You said it's a sexy space and then I didn't hear anything after okay, that. Those, I said uh, it's a sexy space. A lot of people want to work in the music industry what what would you say are three things that you think regardless man or woman you need to have to work in the music industry well you don't need to have anything to work in the music industry but to be successful in the music industry okay. um i i mean i say that because it is an industry where you don't need qualification certification right people you know can manage their best friend their daughter their son um, but I think, uh, to be successful, I think, I mean, is this for anyone or for someone starting out? I think, I mean, well, cause I mean, there's different types of people that will listen to this. So any, from people starting out to somebody still in it. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think one thing is to have a great team, right? There's, whether it's one, whether your team is one person or 10 people, however many people it is, you have to have like great people around you. Um, I think it's important to, I think to be successful, it's important to have integrity. So not everyone's gonna agree with me because there are certainly people who have success who don't have that. Right. But I think for me, that has how I built my career because when I lacked experience, people, people work with me because of my integrity and my hard work ethic. Gotcha. So now I have both, like now I have experience as well as integrity, but I think because there is such a, hole in the industry right. in that regard it's like you can kind of slide in by by someone who just shows up and is dependable and mm -hmm. then who has integrity you're already like half you're already ahead of the game in turn like because i would say most people in the music industry are, are where are like have i wouldn't say trust issues because they're valid but like <laughs> there is a lack of trust in the music industry for good reason right so if you can if you have i always say like for me, when I didn't have experience, I, I made up for an integrity and like dependability. And that was, ha, has value all on its own to people. Right. So they were willing to overlook my lack of experience because they could trust me. Got you. Right. I think that's important. I think um, having a great team is important. I think even with regards to having a great team, like not being afraid to ask questions, mm -hmm. um, and I know that sounds so like everybody says that, but like, I think it really is important to know that it's okay if you don't know everything about like royalties or music supervision or, but like you need to know someone who knows that shit so that you can be like, hey, how do I navigate this for my artist? Or as an artist, how do I navigate this, Right. right. et cetera? I mean, I've always heard this and tell me if this is true. Mm -hmm. Say in order to work in the music business, you have to have a tough skin like you have to be able to take a lot of shit is that true um i mean i think that feels true for life oh. so i don't know like maybe as an artist because you're being judged i think that's definitely true 
Like, as an artist, you're putting yourself out there all the time for rejection. Got you. So that makes sense. But like, as a manager, I feel like, ah, I feel like that's, it's not untrue, but I just don't know if it's more true than someone who's working in a male dominated field in engineering. Uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I mean, it's just something I've always heard all the yeah. time, you know? I uh, think it's something, like, I, I think when I hear that, I, I don't know, I kind of want to say, well, why? Like, why should I have, like, I think you have to have, like, I feel like that comes from a place of, like, your feelings aren't important and you better just buck up, sister. Like, like it sort of, and it just feels like, well, no, I don't have to have a tough skin. Like, I have to have goals like everybody else and know how I want to navigate to get those goals. I should have a team that supports me and I should have, um, like, I should know where I can get information, like where I can find what I need, like whether that's information about royalties or information about whatever in the music industry. Um, but like, if there's some bullshit happening, then like, I don't think that it's like, well, I don't have a tough enough skin for the music industry. It's like, right. No, I mean, it's something that I've always heard all the time. No, no, I know. I mean, I'm, I have heard it myself, but I think it always makes me kind of feel like, I don't know if that's, feels, feels patriarchal. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It sets the, <laughs> sets the wrong tone, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, another question from the chat here, and I get this question a lot, and a lot at Yellow Brick is, how would uh, a songwriter get noticed if they have no intention of being an artist or a singer at all? Just like, what's a cool way to get noticed as a, a songwriter? How to get noticed? Well, writing songs, doing a lot of co-writes. <laughs> I know writing songs seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people ask me that and then don't have songs. <laughs> um, but like, getting co-writes are amazing because right. when you can get in the studio with other writers and producers, one, you always learn, so you're always enhancing your craft. But two, you're making connections with other writers and producers so that when because producers always need writers, right? And they're, you know, so if they, if it's all, it's just good to expand your network because then if they have a project, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to call so and so and see if they want to hop in on this session. Exactly. No, that's that's clever. Um, I'm going to switch lanes to education real quick, just because I think you're frozen. Are you frozen? Okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> you're frozen for like two seconds. <laughs> Um, on the education side, you know, like we have a course called Music Essentials um, and it's really broad strokes. It gives people a lot of uh, different entry points to get into the music business. Mm -hmm. In your experience, what would you say uh, would be the real education and learning how to navigate the, the music business? Like what are some of the things you would encourage people to do to educate themselves? Hmm. I think it depends on what like aspect of the music business. Okay. Um, for me, it was like hands-on experience. So for me, it was a ton of research, a ton of like interning and volunteering um, or working in like junior positions and then trying to apply the research that I was researching to like, to kind of carve my own style of work of what, which, which ultimately became management. Um, I feel like you kind of can't beat that only because in music, the industry changes so much that like, there's certainly some key things that you would learn like in a academic course. Okay. But like, I would say half of it is going to be irrelevant a year from now. So there's going to be key, not that it's not important at all because there's, there's some kind of key things that are probably always going to be the same, but right. just, like even just like you could never, we could never have predicted that like there was going to be a pandemic and oh here we go again with the whole music industry being turned on its head. Like <laughs> now it's like again we're I feel like with every project we put out, it's always from scratch. Like it's always okay. We can't do it the way we did it last time. How are we gonna navigate this? So there's key things that kind of stay the same or close to the same, and then there's like just things we have to where we are creating from like nothing where we're just like okay well what is the best way to do this and we have to figure it out we have to figure it out for sure so um does that answer the question yeah, yeah i mean like i feel like there's different levels to education from what i heard it's more like it's it's not unimportant to take school yeah but it's good to get an understanding which is 
kind of what you pretty much what yellow brick does but really get your hands in the mix is what's more important is the way i, I take what you're saying yeah yeah uh, there's a question here it's kind of long-winded so i'll paraphrase it yep. i think it could be a couple different levels to it um for people who whether you're an artist or you want to get a job at a label but you're always almost getting to the finish line but you can't break through it starts to get frustrating right um what kind of advice or what advice would you give to those people who they have the experience but they can't get to another level or they can't get to the place that they want to be um through that you know the, 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 the struggling point any advice you would give to push through to just make to keep it going um i mean i feel like i would need a little bit more context but like is this someone for example like who's in like what is the next level like what's that i mean, I mean regardless of what's the next level just i feel like everybody goes through a sticking point right like i've gone through it in my career where you're like man i don't want to do this no more um so just thinking about maybe think back when you if you had it where there's a sticking point where you're like man i've gotten so far but i'm not sure i can continue to go any further because i'm starting to help myself what are some of the tools that you've kind of empowered yourself to push through hmm um i'm not sure because i feel like a lot of those times for me i haven't had time to, to, to there has been I, there's too much happening that I, I didn't have time to like really feel that way um and i think something like what one of my artists says to me which in some ways is great in some ways is very frustrating is i think because early on in our relationship i was always able to solve problems when a problem arises this is sean he'll be like oh yeah but you'll got it. you'll figure it out right, <laughs> like, right, right. i don't want to figure this out like i don't yeah. want to always solve it. but back to this question i think um like without more context i think i would look at a couple things like what are you defining as success or the get the breakthrough that you're not having because maybe it's not in alignment with like where what your trajectory is Perfect, right. um and then and then maybe it's just patience like maybe it's not realistic to have this so because there would be a great example when mmvas used to happen right. much music video awards right. every artist wants to perform on there so for example an artist could say every year i want to play on the mmvas but i don't know why i'm not breaking through so in that case i would say well is it realistic that you would be performing at that leg there yet in your career like to this year right. maybe it's more realistic for you to be performing there in three years right right it's not as it's okay to have it as a goal but like just because there's actual reasons why they and why much music is at that time iHeartRadio radio now like choosing those artists like that all they care about is views stream like they're not just picking artists for the talent right so like I, I think it's the same thing with artists who want to be an artist full time. Right. So it's like, okay, great. You want to be an artist full time? Like I, this is a great example. I had this conversation with an artist earlier this year, and he's like, "Yeah, my goal is he had just got signed. This is actually valuable for people to know. He had just got signed to an independent right. label, right? And he's like, "Yeah, I want to this year. I want to work. I just want to be able to be an artist full time." And I'm like, "Okay, great. How much do you have to make a year?" <laughs> And he was like, oh, okay. You're like, how much are you making in your job right now? Like, he has that number. Okay. I'm like, okay, so we have to divide that. Like, how much do you think you can pull in at a show? Right. Now that amount starting out isn't very big. Right. So it's like, okay, so we have to divide this by, I mean, we're making projections of like, okay, so you have to do this many shows at this rate, maybe get a sink or two, maybe like, where like is revenue and then it was he, it was very clear to him he's like well yeah this isn't gonna happen this year right right like this is like maybe a goal to have in two years right, right. but like he it wasn't so i think sometimes you have to just figure out like what is like, this where, a, where are you to, to yeah is yeah it a realistic goal right now yeah and just for the someone else who's listening in case they're like no it doesn't none of that applies to me you may just need a mentor who can just help you like just see the next step that's that you're not seeing Right. That, that makes a ton of sense. Mentors are super important. Yeah. In music and in everything. It, it, just to piggyback on that question, the person that's asking specifically was asking about the label side. Like they've gone, they've gone to the final interviews a few times, but feel like they haven't jumped over the finish line. 
Um, and then they're asking if there's any advice there. Like to get a job at a label or to get signed to a label? Looks like the, to get a job at a label. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that might be, I would say two things, like might not be the right label or it might not, it might just be patience. Cause I mean, at a label, there's only one, there's only a finite amount of jobs. Right. So there could be a lot of reasons why that's happening. I mean, and maybe the answer even is for this person is like, I mean, these are questions I can't get answers, but just whoever you are, like, <laughs> why, why do you want to work for a label? What experience do you want to get from a label? Could you get that experience working at a publisher instead of a label? Because you're still, you could still be a and ring in a publishing company. Right. You'd still be meeting a similar amount of people. Does it make sense to look at starting your own label? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where they are in their career. Mm -hmm. um, does it make sense to do like you probably could get a, a something with an independent label um yeah i, I don't know I'm, again i don't have context so yeah i mean it's just a general question i think yeah. that's really really good advice um and i always like stories so like <laughs> maybe speak of a story or a project that you worked on that while you're going through it it was like super stressful but then when you look back you're like wow that shit was actually super dope because I always think those are like all of them. <laughs> all of them. Right, right, right. Well, well, speak to one of them then. <laughs> um, the reason I ask it, just yeah. to like give it more context, is because I feel like a lot of times people see us at the finish line. Yeah. So they see when she's in the lights, and oh my God, she's amazing, and she she gets to do all this cool shit, but they don't realize like all the grit and grind that happened for the lights. Yeah. How many times you're like, yo, I'm off this, or like, how many arguments you may or you may not have. And then when you run through the finish line, everyone's there applauding you, like, oh my God, you're the best. But yeah. they're going there all the way through from zero to 99. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think it's important for you, for people to share those, those stories. I mean, I really do think that is every project. Um, <laughs> I think the only difference is that the more times I do it, the more confidence I have. Because like the first time was like, oh my God, I think I lost 20 pounds just from stress. <laughs> and then, but then it's like, okay, yeah. And then you think, oh, stress is like, this will never happen. Now, I'm, now I've made it. No, now it's like, you just are climbing new mountains all the time. Got it. I like so that. I think instead of telling a story of just like one time, I think like when I came to Toronto, like I came with nothing. It was not the most well thought out plan like i came <laughs> with i drove here with my like little honda civic and i literally had 300 dollars and like a visa that i totally fucked up my credit early on <laughs> um but like and i just came here to make it in the music business right. and like i think i didn't know how hard it was going to be like thank god i didn't know how hard it was going to be because i would never have done it like if i had known all the struggles like i just i think from coming from nova scotia it was a very like just standard of living is different, you know, like, um, well, it's a whole different city. Yeah. And so, um, I wanted to work in either like a booking agency or like a big concert promotion, like a live nation back then it was house of blues. Okay. Um, just to meet a lot of people. Cause I didn't really know that many people here. So I got a job, uh, at a booking agency. So I was booking like urban talent when it was like when flow kind of was first getting on, was on the air. So I like made hardly any money doing that, but I still, again, made relate, had relationships um, that I still have now. And I hate, I actually hate being, I do not want like cold calling. Like I, that is not something that, and that's all I was doing all day. So it was, I think important for me in my career to even just do something that I not, not, I don't think, I don't mean it's important to do things you don't like, but like it was a skill I, I think I still did need to learn. Right. Like I use it I can use it now, but I don't have to do it all day. Right. Um, but I think that like, you know, I kind of like was always sort of navigating my way to like working in places where I was exposed to people, like where I was around people who could notice me because they did, they would always notice, like I said, my integrity or my hard work ethic. Like right. I will tell a story. I was, when I was um, working on this event called Brush the Boat, Okay. And Lisa Zabitnu, she was the president of BMG at the time. It was a project that um, her and Paul Green were running and she, she was like really, uh, one of, like spearheaded the program. So she hired me to be the project, I think I was a project coordinator or stage coordinator. 
and so I was, I would work at a BMG because so I could have like access to her all the time. And I had this little office, like had no windows or anything. And one day the power went out in the building and, and like, I, my, for me, in terms of the event, it was like a two week timeline. It was super short. Um, so like, I didn't have the luxury of like, just chilling when the power went out. I'm like, oh my gosh, well, what can I do? And for some reason, I, like this is old school, what phones would work when the power goes out. <laughs> they just don't have the, like all the features. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go through this call list. <laughs> and the president from the New York office was in town that day and she was showing him around the, 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 the sorry, I'm calling it Sony because it's now Sony, but it was BMG at the time. And like people are playing basketball because they have like a little bat, like they have a games area because the power's out, so nobody's working. And she's <laughs> walking around, and and I'm like on the phones, and I'm like calling people. And she's like, "Oh yeah, and this is Cat," and she's like, "She's actually the only one who's working, and the only one who doesn't work here." <laughs> 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 but like she noticed that he noticed that, you know, like. Right. So I think um, I'm getting way off. I don't think I'm even answering your question at this point, but. Um, to bring it back full circle, mm -hmm. I think like, well, I think, yeah, finish. I don't want to cut you off. Well, finish. I was going to say like, I, I still had to do all of those things where I like really wasn't hardly making rent at those times, like mm -hmm. where I was struggling and I had now, you know, ruined my credit at like the early days of being here. Um, because I just didn't, I just can't, I just came without a plan and like, I would never suggest that someone do well. I did. But for me and my personality, I would never have done it if right. I had to have wait to do a, like to have a plan. That's just my personality. But right. so like, I kind of have to throw, you kind of have to throw me in and it's like sink or swim. Yeah. And I was yeah. just very passionate about not coming home with my tail between my legs. Yeah, no, for sure. You're just going to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so like, I was, I put myself in places where like the people who could help me would notice me. And then, I mean, that's how I met Sean Desmond because she signed him and, um, he was with another label at the, at the time, I mean, another, like an imprint at the time. So I worked there for a while and then, yeah. And then I left there, started my own company. And like when he and I, when he, I started my own company, he left and came with me. Okay. And like for that first year, getting back to like the hard times, like we had nothing, like we had to leave without the masters. Wow. We had no idea if um, Universal would put the album out because that like, there's so much happening. And then like, he has a family. So I, we, so we are starting from zero again, where it's like, okay, he's been out of market for five years. Right. We have this album, but like, we don't own the masters. We don't have a termination agreement yet. We're leaving for like reasons around integrity and, and, right. and yeah, because right. we work well together and we know we can do this. Right. But like, no, no money. Like, so yeah. we're like, okay, well, right. not me, me, <laughs> like, okay. How much does he have to make a month? How much do I have to make a month? Okay, how are we gonna make this money in this, like on a month? Like we would literally get up, get up every day and just throw up, like not literally throw up, but you know, get on the phone and be like, oh my God, like, and as a manager, I have to be the person who's like, no, we're doing this, it's okay. Like you have to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, we did. I mean, and it was, and it, but it's like, again, easy to say now. Yeah, those were like the, some of the biggest hits of his career, like, Sure. But going into it, we didn't know that. We didn't know that it was going to work out. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, that's that's crazy. Like during those times of doubt, how did you push through? Because that sounded like I, I know when I started my own thing, like and then not started it and started it again. Like those moments are tough. Like how do you push through during those moments? I think. Well, I remember the like those particular moments, like when, like, I think some decisions you make for like for I mean I don't know if it's when you're starting a business per se but like in my gut I knew we were doing the right thing like I knew we, I didn't know if we were going to be successful but I knew we were making the right decision like we wanted to be free we wanted to like do business from a different place of integrity like there was a lot of things we wanted to do differently right and that I was 100% clear on but having said that you wake up every day and you're not sure how you're gonna pay rent or pay your bills or whatever like of course there's anxiety and then I have an artist who's also has those anxieties who's calling and like oh my god maybe we made the wrong decision you know we've made the right decision we just got it like <laughs> just gotta I think it. you just have to like take for me take it day by I mean day by day I don't mean don't have a plan but like month by month maybe 
in this case, it was like, okay, but how much do we have to make like right now? Okay, how much do we have to make in this? And okay, who do we need on side? Like we, Universal needs to put this out. So like, how can I ensure that that happens? Like, and thinking of it in terms of maybe smaller pieces instead of like, like in my mind, the far thing was, oh my God, I'm gonna get sued and I do not have $100,000. Like I could be thinking <laughs> about that every day. Right, right. But like, that's not gonna be helpful. So. Right. It's like, okay, no, but what do we need like right now? To, for this to work, we need this, this, and this. I mean, it's not a perfect system. It's not like I didn't wake up and want it. Like, literally, I wanted to throw up every morning. It's like when you wake up in the moment, in the morning, and there's that one moment where you're like, ah, and you're like, oh, fuck, shit. I forgot about like all this stuff we're dealing with right now. <laughs> a lot of work, man. It's yeah. A, it's a lot of brain work for sure. Yeah. Every day you get up, you got to figure it out. But look where you are now. So I take my hat off to you for figuring it out. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Thanks. But I, like I say, I mean, it doesn't ever change. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you're still figuring it out. And I think <laughs> that's important for people to understand that, like, you said it well earlier in the talk, where you just, it's new mountains you've got to climb. Yeah. And every mountain, you start back at zero. Then you go yeah. high and you go low. Go high, go low. Yeah. So, um, kudos to you for embracing the highs and the lows, you know, because that's part of it. Yeah. Um, and I do think something that was important for me to learn in that whole process I mean, for my career is not like absorbing the emotions of my artists. Cause sometimes it's like, if they're feeling a lot of anxiety, it's easy for me to then start feeling that too. Got it. And it's important to separate like, okay, yes, I understand your feelings. Then I have to kind of think of it as like, okay, but some of this is real and some of it's not real. Right. 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 I mean, that's with, that's with a lot of stuff because we're, yeah. we're in our head the majority, well, not the majority of the time, but when you're under stress, you go to your head, which is never a good thing. Yeah. Um, so we got two more questions. We got about 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, a simple question. What platforms do you like that artists are showcasing themselves on right now? Like, uh, like showcasing what? themselves like live streaming or? Live stream, music, like what, what platforms are you checking out new artists on? I mean, I check out art. I mean, if they mean like listening in terms of like, I mean, I listen on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music. If they're talking about live streaming. Right. Um, I mean, I love Club Quarantine. I think they're doing really great. In fact, getting back to that question about like um, what you were saying, where people could be... Uh, expanding in this new space like in terms of music and like creating new roles and stuff i think they are doing a great job at that um i don't love instagram live just because i feel like it has so many glitches if you if you do not know how to use like obs or something to like make sure that your stream is not like cu cutting out all the time Got it. but i yeah so i still i mean yeah, I, I mean, I discovered talent everywhere. I mean, to, to right on the back of that, like, what do you look for in an artist that you would want to manage? Usually, an artist I want to manage comes to me via referral. So there's someone who has worked with them before or knows them. Um, I think, yeah, there's only one artist who I actually met on, who I met on Instagram. She reached out to me on Instagram. Um, but in Canada, you know, the, the industry is small, so we knew people in, in common. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I guess, what do you look for, for, like, for you to manage them well? Like, you and Sean Desmond have been together for, what, a long time, right? Yeah, over 10 years. Yeah, so, like, what are some of the... Like, regardless of how they come to have... Like, what are some of the traits yeah. that you, you would want an artist to have in order for you to manage them well? I think... A killer live show is important. Um, like, heart, they have to want it more than anybody else. Right, right. Um, uh, I think an openness to like try, like to try things. To um, like whether that's getting in the room with a different producer or a different writer, just right. to, like an openness to explore. Um, what I mean, it's hard to kind of pinpoint it, but like there has to just be that connection for me because management is like a marriage. Like it's pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty tight relationship. It's not right. the same as like having a publicist, for example, where you may not have to like spend that much time with them. It's like, like 
So for me to want, I have to love your music. Like I have to love what you're creating. Right. I don't have to love every song you do, but like I have to want to, like I have to believe in it so that I can push it and be passionate about it on a consistent basis. Absolutely. And really like, you know, like there has to be that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's dope. So last question, and yeah. you know, you can take this as long as you want or short as you want. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to work in the music business? Um, what advice would I give anyone who wants to work in the music business? Like in terms of how to... Like just advice in general, like how, like, you know, I've, you know, I've been working in sneakers for a long time. Someone asked me, I'd be like, make sure you're passionate about working in the sneaker industry because yeah. uh, if you're not passionate about it and you're just chasing the money, you probably won't last like that's the way i would answer that yeah a lot of people say oh i want to design sneakers it's like you sure you want to work 18 hour days dude because like right. that's what it looks like before it gets to the shelf yeah yeah right? yeah. but you see the shelf that's why you think it's a sexy job yeah 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 <laughs> that would yeah, be I, mean, I definitely think that's similar um it's definitely not to do it for the money um yeah i mean i think i think it's important to be um, coachable for lack of a better, like, I think it's important to like be able to ask questions, but to be coachable, like to, you're, it's going to be really hard to get anywhere you want to go in music without like mentors, or at least being able to listen to people who have done it before you, even though the industry has changed right. and is always evolving and changing and the landscape is always shifting. There's like, kind of some core things that people who are veterans know more than you. Right, for sure. And and um, it doesn't mean all of it is the, what you should do, but I definitely think that there's like, it, I think sometimes because the industry changes so much, it's almost like, oh, well, all that old information now is no longer relevant. And it's like, well, no, the marketing information is not relevant, but like how to navigate a space is right. still relevant. Absolutely. Um, well, there's, there's actually one question that the guys or the girl or the guys asked a couple of times. Okay. In order to be in A&R, do you have to be in the U.S.? Because they're currently in Detroit. I, I think I know the answer, but like... Do you guys. have to be in the U.S. to be in A&R? Yep. No, there's A&Rs in every country. Every label has an A&R. So more specifically, they're asking, do you have to relocate to New York or Cali? Because they're in Detroit. Well... I can tell you right now that that answer has probably changed dramatically today <laughs> than if you had asked me a month ago. Because companies now, I don't know if you noticed that Shopify has just announced that they're completely going um, online. Yeah, that's Remote. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so I definitely think that I, I, whoever asked this question, I think if, they, if it's something they've been thinking about, the answer definitely would have been different two months ago. And right now I would say, no, you do not have to be. Right. Right. Yeah. Especially with what we're going through right now. Yeah. But I do think that, um, I mean, a big part of A&R is seeing people perform live and that is going to be a huge challenge right. right? with this, with this um, pandemic and just where things are going. Um, in closing, any final thoughts that you want to share with people that are listening? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Um, Kat, yeah. thank, thank you so much for spending the hour with us. Um, actually, you know what you should do is let people know where to find you if they have additional oh, yeah. questions that we didn't cover, um, whether it's IG, email, however you want it to be. Yeah, they can find me on IG at Katrina, K-A-T-R-I-N-A -A underscore Lopez, L-O-P-E-S. Should I put it in the chat? Uh, yeah, you can throw it in the chat. Let's do it like that. Yeah, let's do it like that. <laughs> um, wait. Uh, or you can find me at klmanagement.co. Perfect. Oh, yeah, look at all the questions. Sorry, I was not looking at them because uh, I, would, I would be totally distracted if I did that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I got through a good bit of them and like I integrated them into the talk. Yep. Um, but I'm sure I missed one or two because there was about 11 of them. Uh, 
but I mean, you just shared your information. People have additional questions. They just want to hit you on the side to say thank you or whatever. Um, yeah. Mentions in the chat. Uh, but Kat, I feel like it's family, basically. I feel like I just talked to my big sister for like <laughs> people. And, kind of people. Uh, and if the, the cool thing about us is like we go through these gaps of time where we don't connect or we don't speak. But what I love about you the most, every time I see you, you've always taken it to a whole other level every time. Oh, thank you. I think, remember when I asked you to do it, I was like, man, like I took a step back and I said, I just want to make sure that I congratulate you on all the hard work you've done over, over the years. Cause like you keep doing it, right? Like every time I see you're still in the music business, still doing your thing. I'm like, yo, you still doing music? You're almost look at me like I'm crazy. Like, <laughs> So like I take my hat off to you, and, uh, you know, from the family side, man. I'm really, um, I congratulate you for all the work you've done, man. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know for sure. <laughs> it's hard, honestly. It's hard for me to remember, like, or not hard for me to remember. It's hard to believe, like, when I think back to, like, oh yeah, like I used to have those parties in Scotia. Like I've known you for, like, since I started my career. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's like when I think it was Tara that that could reconnect to us. Yeah. And. She's like, you remember Kat? And I was like, do I remember Kat? Like, those were days I was playing basketball. Like, people don't even know me as a basketball guy. Yeah. <laughs> sneaker guy. And not realizing that, like, that's what I used to do for my life was basketball before I even started doing all this stuff now. Yeah. So it's almost like I've known you a couple lifetimes ago. Yeah. Right? Because I was a completely different Dion than I am today. So the fact that you're still around and we can connect and trade stories, I think that's super cool, you know? Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's fun to talk about this stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, anyone else, there's, you know, you want to replay the conversation or you want to share it with your network or friends, you can catch it at yellowbrick.co backslash marked. Um, but yo, thank you guys for, st for <laughs> it's a hot day in Toronto, finally, <laughs> for sharing your Saturday afternoon with us. And uh, Kat, thank you so much. Appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll keep in touch, babe. Absolutely. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank Bye, you. everybody.